Dr. Matthias, uh, you're based at ETH in Switzerland. What's the likelihood that we can preserve the glaciers in the Alps in Europe? Well, the likelihood is very small. We can certainly not preserve them in the state that they are now, in the size and volume. So a lot of the loss of glaciers in the future is already committed. So even if we stabilize the climate at exactly the present state, the glaciers are going to strongly retreat. And if we apply very strong climate mitigation goals and fulfill all pledges, uh, at this, from this COP, we might be able to save maybe 40% yeah. of the glaciers in the European Alps. If we don't apply climate mitigation, we're going to lose almost everything, maybe except for some small ice patches at very high elevation. Okay, and what sort of impact, because this is something that we, we do see it now, but it's kind of happening in slow motion. What impact does that have on the people who live there? And you know, is that something you've been looking at? There are various impacts from the local to the global scale. So locally, uh, the most important impact is certainly the water resources. Glaciers are providing water uh, for water supply, irrigation, but also for hydropower production, which is very important in the Alps. If the glaciers are changing, they are retreating, this uh, water resources will change, the regime will change, meaning especially that in dry and hot years, we're going to have less water and it's ex exactly then when we need the water in dry and hot summers and at the moment glaciers fulfilled it, this function in providing um, waters when we need them um, when the glaciers are gone this water will decline and there is also an impact on hydropower so hydropower will probably be less efficient with less glaciers although the effect is not as pronounced but then we also have uh, some cultural um, impacts like on tourism. Many people come to the Alps for recreation, for hiking, for holidays and the glaciers there are just representing this beauty of the Alps, of the mountains and if they are lost the appearance of the Alps will strongly change and this might be quite important actually for tourism in the Alpine regions. I heard you use a term yesterday which was cultural asset and I think I mean, it's quite shocking to think that we're at a high risk of losing the, the, the ice cover in the Alps. And is there, um, how well do you think this is being communicated to the public at large? Well, I think glaciers have quite a, a big interest in media reporting to the public. And I think people are also realizing when they uh, go to the mountains that glaciers are changing. So glaciers have this power of communicating climate change very well because these changes are just very visible, much more visible than a, a graph with rising temperatures or just the feeling of the summer heat, uh, which is something like subjective. Um, but glaciers are very clear and they show the climate is changing and we're struggling to bring out this message with our research and we hope that uh, this is being seen by people. Okay. I think the whole subject of losing glaciers is very tangible. In the scenario where you've given that even if we achieve everything at this COP, you know, it's still very likely that we're going to lose most of it, all of it, I don't know. How do, how do you sustain any optimism that we should um, continue to, to try and mitigate hard? Uh, you know, and I know there's a global context, not just European context. Yes, it, it's very important to see this locally. So for the European Alps, we know that we cannot change a lot. Glaciers are going to disappear or become much smaller in any case. But the really big impacts, the global impacts, sea level rise, they can be limited. And we need to limit sea level rise to, uh, well, make, keep this planet livable. If sea level uh, rises by more than uh, one or two meters um, in the next hundred years, this is going to cause huge effects on coastal communities, uh, um, on, on billion of, billions of people. Um, so this is what can still be avoided by reducing CO2 emissions. We cannot save, save the alpine glaciers, but we can save 
the polar glaciers um, and the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. And these need to be saved to keep the planet more or less as it is right now. So that's the direction of your optimism at the moment, or effort, or momentum. Yes, exactly. I think we need to be optimistic because something needs to be done. There's no other choice. Um, if you're pessimistic and you're saying, well, it's, all, it's too late anyway, then you're not, you're not working in the right direction. So we need to act and I'm still confident that changes are ongoing. I saw a big development in the last years after the impression, also in the, in the understanding of the public of this whole climate change debate. So it is much more present nowadays than it was only five years ago, I think. Also when there are national um, votations and, and elections, the climate change debate is always very high on top, which was not the case a few years ago. And I, I think this makes me confident that we're on the right track, that at least the problem is being discussed. And this is the first step into the right direction, although we might not be where we should be. And the ambition is, is huge to get uh, net zero by 2050 or 60. But at least if we're on the right track, this is good. Okay. And yesterday, and I think today as well, we've had a lot of speeches from, from leaders and you know, the British Prime Minister, as we were in Britain, has compared this to the James Bond ticking bomb and we've got to unpick this bomb. People outside are saying, well, that's all the rhetoric side, you know, all these things that they, they say they're going to do. Are you with the, the crowd outside or are you with the, the leaders inside? Yeah, I don't know. I'm always feeling a bit when politicians use the rhetoric side that I'm tempted to not fully believe them. But, I mean, they, they need to convey that they are trying and working in this direction. And I mean, it's the best we can expect. I hope that some of what they promise and try to achieve is finally coming, but we can't be sure. Um, for politicians, it's always difficult because for politicians, it's always difficult because they need to be re-elected and you're not getting re-elected if the people don't like what you do. So um, I think it's a, it's a very difficult problem, but um, the world as a community um, needs to solve it. And I think this is why we're all here at this conference. Okay. Well, look, it's been good to talk to you. So thank you very much. You're welcome.